All right, so let's jump in the Copilot. So we're gonna open Copilot and since it's evening, and we're, it's gonna give us some suggestion, like can we can co-create a bedtime story. Um, like I have a recipe for any cooking level. It's gonna give us some suggestions and it has a very cool interface. Uh, much better than ChatGPT. So still we got message copilot and we got the little microphone icon. Hey Jan, housewife in your corner of the world. So that's the copilot. Now we're gonna go to the settings. We have these settings. The voice mode are gonna be only four options. So we have four voices and we have the speed as well, which we can adjust on. And using these voices and speeds, we can understand better if we wanted to use Copilot better. This is the beginning of the uh, Copilot. And we're gonna open now ChatGPT. Uh, so I'm gonna close down the Copilot now and I'm gonna open the ChatGPT. So ChatGPT is more different. So we're gonna click on the icon. So we got a different thing. We have the mute microphone button and oh, still. My apologies for that. Oh, and we got the voices still. We have nine voices and we don't have any speed adjustments. So we have uh, basically a lot of options in voices in ChatGPT, but we don't have actually that one. And you don't have a lot of options except for voices and speed control. That's it. This is available only for the application, for the app, for the desktop. ChatGPT hasn't released yet their, uh, their app so far for desktop like Windows, but they released it for Mac OS. Copilot, however, comes in Windows by like automatically, so you have it over there and you can still have the conversation with. Now we're gonna see the natural sounding speed. Now I'm gonna open the ChatGPT and Copilot. So we're gonna see, we're gonna greet, and we're gonna see if which one is natural. So I'm gonna start with this one, the ChatGPT. Hello ChatGPT, it's evening, how are you doing? Hey there, I'm doing well, thanks for asking. How about you? I'm good, thanks. Uh, so what's up, what's up, like what's going on, how's it going on? Not much. Just here to chat with you. How's your day been so far? Uh, it, it has been a great day. That's awesome to hear. Anything exciting happen? Or was it just a nice day overall? Well, it was just uh, home alone and work and study. Sounds like a productive day. It's nice to have those sometimes. Did you get a lot done with work and studying? Oh yeah, a lot. So that was the conversation, the like introduction, all of that to get to know each other. And it seemed really natural and more fluent and, and we had a good, great flow. So we could inter like interrupt at any, at any time and she, under she was understanding it each time. So we're gonna open now the Copilot. Hey Copilot, Hi. hey, hey Copilot, uh, what's up? Hey Jen. Uh, what's up? No rush. I'm here. Keep going whenever you're ready. No, like, uh, what, 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 how is, what's going on? Not much. Just hanging with you. Late night vibes and full effect. What's, uh, on your mind? Uh, my mind. Like, I was, had a home alone today and, uh, I had done a lot of study and a lot of work. Sounds like a So by far, you understand which one is better. ChatGPT sound more fluent and more conversational, and it didn't act like a robot. It were more natural and it had a great flow. But then in the other way, Copilot was a little bit dumb, and he was like, he was pausing too much on a single word, and it wasn't that much natural. So so far, if you want to try the 
advanced new voice mode of Copilot or ChatGPT, I would give a choice to ChatGPT because it's more natural and it has more interactive. And because we asked a lot, we asked at first like, what's up? And things a little bit got rough at Co in Copilot. So, but ChatGPT handled it well. So better natural, more natural, we got it with the Copilot, no, ChatGPT, and more interactive, the more we got it in in ChatGPT, not Copilot. So we're gonna right now do the listening capabilities, um, which we tried a little bit half demo, but we're gonna try it again. All right, so ChatGPT, what are your listening capabilities? What can you hear? Do you only can hear word or you can hear music too? I'm designed to focus on understanding spoken language, so I can definitely catch words and respond to what you're saying. When it comes to music, I can recognize lyrics and talk about music, but I don't process tunes or melodies the way humans do. Is there a particular oh, no, no, or thank type you. of music you had in mind? All right. If you think of anything else you want to chat about. So as you can see, whenever I interrupt the speaker, the ChatGPT, it just says the answer. It's instant, it's automatic. Hey, uh, Copilot, can you uh, only hear words or you can also listen to music or hear music? I'm tuned into your voice only. Music, it seems, is beyond my auditory senses. What's been on your playlist lately, though? All right, so I think I would give it with the Copilot still. Uh, no, I would give a choice to ChatGPT. However, you can navigate them to different word usage. So as you can see, the Copilot and ChatGPT responded differently. The reason is, ChatGPT has a memory setup, so still it can remember my name and it can remember things that I tell her or him in the past. Copilot doesn't have that memory settings yet. Um, so the way Copilot answered and s spoke to me was quite different, different and it was more formal, but I can navigate to her, like speak more, conversational or speak more differently, whatever. So I can navigate their speech. Both are good at listening, um, probably the same. Uh, the user interface is much better in Copilot, however, uh, particularly in the Windows app. So we got bigger icons, more animations and all of that. In ChatGPT, we have just a solid UI or UX design uh, that can we can use and we had this for a long time but Copilot has a big button and more like a little bit easier interface to suggest and to click on. Um, we're gonna do some personal assessment like what Copilot and uh, what uh, ChatGPT can do for us. Hi Jen. Hey, 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 uh, so what, what, what can you do as a personal assessment for me? Can, can you speak more uh, more friendly and conversational? Of course. So let's toss around some topics. Want to dive into what's been on your mind lately? Or should we just shoot the breeze? I, I don't understand, so I'll assume that I am in a beginner English speaker. No problem. Basically, I'm here to chat, answer questions, and keep you company. More like a fan than a tool to manage your tasks or schedule. So, what would you like to talk about? So can you, uh, what, what do you can do as a personal assessment? That's my question. Got there. Think of me as a conversation partner rather than a traditional personal assistant. I can keep you company, throw around ideas, share fun facts, or get into deeper combos about life's ups and downs. So well, can you help me on I have some. I have some like very big thing on my mind. Like I want to choose 
I want to I, I want to like go with mechanical keyboard or with the standard keyboard which one is better for me if I want to type faster and code and, and all of that if speeds your goal a mechanical keyboard might be up your alley they often have tactile feedback and a satisfying click that can help with accuracy and speed. Plus, they're great for coding marathons. Standard keyboards get the job done, but they don't quite match the feel or responsiveness of a mechanical. Any preferences, leaning? All right, now we're going to try the personal assistant and add the question of which one is better with the with the ChatGPT. Hey Chad GBD, so where I am the I struggle to choose between a standard keyboard and mechanical keyboard. Well what, what would you do choose if, if you were instead of me for a speed type fasting typing fast and doing stuff on the internet and particular decoding? If you're looking for speed and comfort, especially for coding, a mechanical keyboard could be a great choice. They offer tactile feedback and quicker response times, which can enhance typing speed and accuracy. Plus, they tend to be more durable. However, they can be a bit noisier, so that's something to keep in mind if you're in a shared space. All right, so thanks. So we, we got the idea, it says mechanical keyboard is better. Now, I'm gonna switch both of them as a personal assistant to teach me um, Australian accent and if they can do that all right hey um, hey Chad JBD, can you teach me um, and speak from now on Australian accent sure thing mate I'll switch to an Australian accent for you if there's anything else you'd like to know or talk about just let me know all right so we that's it for now uh, we're gonna do copilot Hey, um, Chad, hey, co-pilot, so can you uh, speak to me in an Australian accent? So I want to learn Australian accent. Get up, mate. How's this for a down-under accent? I'll be your guide to Aussie lingo. What's the first phrase you want to master? Like greeting stuff. To greet someone in Australia, you might say, Good day or how you going? It's casual and friendly. Give it a go. Or is there another greeting you want to try hey, out? Hey, mate. Is that enough? Mm -hmm. So, in both are really good at teaching us things like accent or anything, um, particular education and all of that. However, so since you're speaking to, to that, you might not be able to learn coding at this point. So you need to open the chat and write it down. And I believe the chat GPT is much better in coding because it has been a long time over there and, and a lot of years there. We're gonna of course take a look at both in a desktop version um, after we're done at the some, some, some more demos. We're gonna see which one is better for us so both right now has a new voice mode and a, a conversational thing, but Copilot, no, ChatGPT, ChatGPT promised for the video advanced call. Uh, probably they might release it by the end of the fall. So we're gonna now um, try. So uh, on the desktop, which one is better for like? coding and learning and questioning and all of that. So let's jump in. All right, so you see both on screen and we have the Copilot Pro and ChatGPT Plus. We don't have yet the voice mode in Chrome version or a new app version for ChatGPT 4.0 for desktop particularly or for the web. So, but we do have the new access to 4001 and Canvas, which is for writing and coding. Uh, we will talk this in another video, uh, not here. But mostly, we want, I want to tell you more about Copilot's new thing, which actually is the little icon button talk to Copilot. And we got a great user interface at the Copilot Pro. I'm going to click over here and now we can talk. 
So there you go. I wanted to. I wanted. I didn't want to speak because this is the same thing like we did on the phone version.、Um, so you got right now your companion on your desktop app within your Windows.、Um, we don't have that in 4.0, and that's a big win for Copilot. Even they're using probably OpenAI thing. I don't know that yet, but that's what I'm thinking. And there's a lot of information about it. So still, we got the settings, but we don't have the speed change on the settings. So cool things about the Copilot、uh, voice mode, new voice mode, which you can actually talk and converse and improve and get things done. Same thing over here. All right. So if you're new to this channel, this would be a great time to subscribe and. Support us. See you on. See you in another video.